You're at your local tournament getting ready to play your first round. You've been excited to play all week and you're ready to show your opponent what you're made of. You get to the character select screen and you pick your character. Your opponent then moves the cursor over to a character. You clinch, hoping your opponent doesn't pick that character and well, they do. Welcome to Pro Guys, this is Keith Allen, where we have tons of resources to help you level up your game. If you like what you see here, hey, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new videos every day on how to level up your game. Click on the bell to make sure you're the first to know when we upload a video. Want more? Make sure to check out ProGuides.com for more exclusive guides, coaching, and master classes in all things Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. With a roster of over 70 characters, there's bound to be a couple of characters that the general Smash community hates to fight. This is our list of some of our least favorite characters to fight. Remember, this is an opinion list, all right? You may like fighting a character or two in this video. If you have some secret tips on how to topple some of these fighters, leave them in the comments below to help out your fellow Smash brethren. As excited as we all were that Solid Snake was back on the Smash roster, he's one of our least favorite characters to fight. Snake is a heavy zoning character. Many will like to sit back and set up camp on the other side of the stage by planting C4s and throw grenades at their opponents. Even if the Snake player does approach, it can be very difficult to recover as Snake's projectiles cover a lot of area on the stage. If you get past that wall of projectiles, make sure you don't get grabbed as down throw into up tilt can guarantee a kill at high percent. The first Pokemon to enter Smash was considered to be one of the best characters in Ultimate at one point. With its small size, it can be very hard to hit Pikachu in neutral. But what really annoys players about the character is what is called the Lightning Loop. Pikachu can combo for a large amount of percent using down throw, up air, neutral air, and can repeat this combo all the way to kill percent. While you can escape from the combo, going from 0% to 50% in just a couple of neutral interactions can be very discouraging. Even if you manage to escape this, Pikachu has such quickness and agility, able to zip around the stage with its quick attack. Trapping Pikachu at the ledge feels near impossible. Catching him is a game of cat and mouse you don't want to play. If we're talking about small characters that are hard to hit, then we obviously have to talk about Olimar. Using his down special whistle, he's able to control the mysterious Pikmin at his will. In Smash, he has three Pikmin at a time, all varying in colors. Each color Pikmin has its own special ability when thrown against opponents. For example, the purple Pikmin do a lot more damage than the other Pikmin when thrown. On the contrary, if you grab your opponent at around 90% with the blue Pikmin, you're more likely to get the KO off the top of the stage. Keeping this in mind when fighting Olimar can be extremely annoying, especially if the Olimar player doesn't approach and opts to run away and throw his Pikmin at you. Some of the other Pikmin do damage over time when they are thrown and latched onto you. White Pikmin in particular can rack up incredible amounts of damage while on you. You'll see your percentage go from zero to a hundred in the blink of an eye, all trying to catch this tiny fighter. Oh no! One of the most unexpected but hyped newcomers to the Smash roster has to be Ulola's very own Incineroar, but as hype as Incineroar is, it does have a couple of moves that can change the tide of a match pretty quickly. Let's talk about his neutral special first. Darkest Lariat is one of Incineroar's best out of shield options. The move is quick, but it also gives Incineroar invincibility during the move as well, so no close combat can happen while it's spinning around. One out of shield option doesn't make the whole character annoying to fight though. If you hit Incineroar during his down special revenge, he'll receive a major power buff to his next move. If you think you can just run away, make sure you realize that this buff can last up to 60 seconds. If Incineroar uses his side special command grab while buffed at the edge of the stage, you can lose your stock at it as low as 70%. Keep caution. Okay, let's go super low. 
He doesn't quite get what he was looking for, though. 110 piece. Oh and my god, that's going to be the set! Capcom's very own super fighting robot, Mega Man, was introduced to the world of Smash and Smash 4. While lots of people were excited at first, fighting this character now is always an uphill battle. Mega Man has a plethora of projectiles and items such as Leaf Shield. That move can damage you if you're on top of Mega Man while it's active. Mega Man's jab and neutral air together can shoot up to three pellets at a time. They may not do a lot of damage, but can stop any type of approach. If you can get past all of that, make sure you don't get hit by a Z-Drop gear, as getting hit by the gear at high percent can give Mega Man an easy KO with back air or his up tilt. Hyrule's princess never seemed to shine as brightly as she does in Smash Ultimate. Even though she's considered to be middle or lower tier depending on who you ask, her buffs that she received have made her one of the most annoying characters to fight. The power all lies in her specials. Nehru's love, Faror's wind, Din's fire, and Phantom all give Zelda the tools that she needs to annoy her opponents. Nehru's love is the perfect get off me tool. The move has moderate startup, but this protection not only reflects projectiles back at characters, but also delivers direct damage. Zelda players can use and charge up Zelda's personal bodyguard to keep her safe from any fast moving opponent. The Phantom also wields a large sword that does a significant amount of damage and knockback if you get hit by it. Speaking of powerful ladies in the Smash universe, we have to take a second to talk about Palutena. The goddess powerful air game is nothing to scoff at. She is known for her heavy neutral aerial and to up air combos at low percents. Playing a big body character like King Dedede can have you eating up to 70% just from one of these loops of pain. Up air might be her slowest aerial next down to air, but the KO power that it has is off the charts near the blast zone. Her size special, Explosive Flame, is also one of the most annoying projectiles in the game. She can launch the move about four character lengths away from herself, and the move expands outwards pretty far. As Palutena says, no one can hide from the light. If we're going to talk about aerial combos, we have to talk about Yoshi. This dinosaur can flail on someone and deal an extreme amount of damage. For example, Flutter Kick, also known as Down Air, can hit you for 28% if every single kick connects. Yoshi's Nair is another real good out of shield option, allowing him to potentially get away from the opponent and return safely to the other side of the stage. Yoshi players will always look for a good chance to use her forward air meteor to deliver a spike on suspecting opponents. My goodness! He was already dead! What really pushes Yoshi over the edge for characters to fight is his double jump armor. Yoshi's unique double jump gives him a special armor that will reduce the amount of knockback he takes. Simon and Richter Belmont were both hype newcomers to the roster as well. The Castlevania protagonists may not be considered to be in the top tiers of Smash, but rest assured, they are top tiers in being annoying to fight. Just like many other characters on this list, dealing with their projectiles is painful and frustrating, especially when recovering to the stage. Watch out for that holy water. Upon explosion, it keeps you centered in just enough time for them to charge up a forward smash. In neutral, Belmont players usually tend to center their gameplay around boxing their opponent out with their forward air, all while keeping them further away with the Holy Cross. If you make it past everything, the character has a very exploitable recovery. But good luck to getting to that part. Our last character is one of the two representatives from the Earthbound and Mother series, Ness. Despite a game with a cult-like following, Ness has slowly become a truly hated character to fight. With his strong combo potential and keep away game, you need a lot of patience to fight this small boy. The most notable thing about fighting Ness is keeping away from that PK fire. Just like the holy water, when PK fire hits, it can keep you in a place for Ness to follow up with a grab or an onslaught of arrows like forward air or neutral air. 
avoiding PK fire might be the key to this matchup. But remember that Ness has one of the strongest back throws in the game. Just keep away from him at all costs. And that's our list, ladies and gentlemen. Like we said before, it's just our opinion. If you hate fighting characters like Sonic or Lucas, let us know in the comments why. We love to hear it, seriously. Make sure you guys like and share the video with your friends along with your local Smash scene. Hey, check us out on ProGuys.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel here. We'll see you in the next video. Happy Smashing.